There you go. Now. In an effort to maintain compliance with CDC and Pinellas County guidelines for social distancing and general public safety, the city has set up Zoom virtual meetings to facilitate the broadcasting of the public art committee meetings and to provide for public comments. My name is Joan Jennings. I'd like to call the Monday, June 15th, 2020 meeting of the public art committee to order. It is 2 p.m. Marissa, if you would call the roll, please. Mr. Iwanu? Here. Mr. Meals? Here. Ms. Robinson? Here. Ms. Jennings? Here. Ms. Gregory? Here. Ms. Oberlander? Here. Mr. Stackhouse? Here. Okay, we have a full full committee today. So um, uh, because this is a workshop rather than a regular meeting, um, I'm going to request that we hold any emails or comments to the very end. Um, and uh, I've had some communication with some people from the community about some other issues that were under our consideration. Uh, one is that the, uh, there was some discussion about uh, doing projects on the bike trail. And um, I was reminded that uh, it's the property of Pinellas County. So we may have to rethink that. 
And we are also the Tarpon Springs Public Art Committee. So our focus is to be on Tarpon Springs artists and projects. And, um, uh, you know, since we've had such a large turnover on the committee, there's been a, you know, a lot of disconnect with what's gone on, you know, in the past year. So um, the, the purpose of this meeting is to basically find out from this committee what are their priorities, what they'd like to see, what they'd like to uh, discuss, you know, based on the, um, uh, the guidelines in the master plan. Diane, would you please give an overview of both of these documents so we kind of know where things are coming from? Sure, Joan. Um, also, I wanted just to call your attention um, first to the many attachments that you received, you know, for this meeting. I know it's a little bit of a challenge when we're doing this in a Zoom format, but of course, in addition to the agenda, we also, um, I compiled everyone's feedback that you gave me on guidelines and master plan and put those in one document that you all received. Um, we also had the minutes um, of, from the BOC workshop um, back in May that um, Lucy Ann had requested be sent to everyone. And the majority of that is on just on one page of that, of the minutes from the BOC workshop um, is on page three. And uh, then the combined notes, um, Lucy and also requested for your reference um, that uh, Joan Jennings and I and Denise Manning took at that BOC workshop. That was given to you um, mm -hmm. in addition to the virtual meeting flyer. So I hope everybody had a chance to review all those. And basically, you know, our, our main purpose here today is to, you know, we, we've got the revised version of the guidelines and the master plan, but keep in mind that the guidelines, you know, we're, we're driven, our whole committee is driven by the ordinance. And so everybody should become really familiar with the ordinance, but the guidelines are kind of like a, an abbreviated version and an overview, if you will, of the, the ordinance. And then the master plan is designed for the committee, the public art committee to kind of expand on what the plan is for a particular year um, or you know, moving what you'd like to do in five years from now. It's really kind of up to you all and um, your vision you know, for the committee and the master plan. So we have a really good foundation in place um, of different things, but um, you know, maybe take a look at what needs to be changed and um, what can be improved on. So, did you need anything else, Joan, or is that? Oh, okay? no, that's perfect. Does anybody have any questions about what the docs are? I, I noticed that um, a lot of people, well, not a lot, but several people commented about the website and the brochure. And um, our website is tarpanarts.org forward slash public hyphen art. And if you go to that website, you will also find a, a copy of our latest brochure. Um, I guess with, you know, with the quarantining and the social distancing, people haven't been out and about to, you know, actually see the brochure, which is, you know, I know it's in the Cultural Heritage Center, for example, and it would be in the library and city hall and another a number of other places where you know chamber of commerce where it would be accessible to the public but um uh you know it's just a a, a front and back trifold it just gives us a, you know a short overview of the uh you know the public arts here in tarpon does anybody have any questions about oh and it's administered by uh the city diane and marissa does anybody have any other questions about the, the website or the brochure? Okay. All right, I guess we're getting down to the nitty gritty here, the guidelines, okay. Um, well, oh, just to backtrack just a little bit. Um, I went through the um, compiled comments from everybody and that's why I'm, 
I brought up the, uh, the comment about the website because three of you had questions about the website. Um, okay. Uh, there's a, um, Bell, you had a question about the budget and um, I guess I could give you a, 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 an overview of that pretty quickly, but please ask questions. Um, the budget is basically derived from the contributions from developers who are doing projects in Tarpon Springs that are a million dollars or more. There is a percentage outlined in the ordinance that dictates what they pay. And this is all um, put in a de dedicated budget and it rolls over. It's totally de dedicated to public art projects. And um, if we want to do anything that's $15,000 or, or under, we have the liberty to do that. And you know there are certain things that are kind of assumed like maintenance, like last summer we had the, uh, the Mermaid and Craig Park, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, polished and restored because she was, you know, like many of us, many of us were showing uh, signs of wear and tear. Um, Bill, do you have any questions about the budget? Yeah, just the Jaron, again, with my limited experience with the committee, um, it seems like I've seen those projects come in, but they're specific to a developer and it seems like that project is then what the developer does um you know to satisfy that particular uh requirement well my question is you know is there an actual budget is there an actual account do we know how much we spend on maintenance of of the the public art that we currently have you know uh, in inventory well, I've not seen any numbers that, that kind of show us that. Now, I'm sure it's someplace. I just don't know where it might be. Well, um, first to answer your question, when somebody does a development in Tarpon Springs, as I said, in excess of a million dollars, they have the option of either making a cash contribution to the budget or doing a project. And um, this year we reviewed two projects. One, of course, was the Christopher Still mural in the lobby of Advent Health. And the other one was the Cecilia Louisa sculpture for the Icaria apartment complex on Alt 19. So they opted for um, the art projects. Um, our duties in terms of that is to determine that the art projects that they are doing indeed meet our benchmark of, you know, being worth $100,000 or up. And I think, you know, we did that. We reviewed their uh, credentials and what they were planning to do. Um, we should also know that until the art project is completed, the project cannot get a C of O. So it's very important that they finish these projects up. Um, let's see. Um, the, the thing is that um, on June, it's funny you should ask that. On June 23rd, I'm going to be making a presentation to the Board of Commissioners. And basically the format is uh, to do a budget. You know, what's in the fund, what was expended in the past year, and what we plan to spend for the coming year. Right now we have about $274,000 in the budget. Um, about 16,000 of that and change will go to the um, uh, illuminated art boxes. Uh, Diane, it's go I, I imagine it's, uh, I believe it's going before the Board of Commissioners for approval because it's ab above our 15,000 benchmark. I'm waiting to hear from procurement on that uh, because the deadline was Friday. So right. I will definitely get back to you all on that, on the status. Okay, right. But, um, you know, and the thing is that we're going to be installing the Glenna Goodacre story time uh, sculpture, you know, at the newly re renovated cultural heritage building. And um, I guess we're gonna at some point decide whether it needs to be cleaned or, you know, polished or in some way um, maintained 
you know, before it's actually installed or right after it's installed. So that would be considered a routine maintenance expenditure. Anyone else have any questions about <clears throat> Lucianne? Yeah, just a question. Uh, you mentioned this in terms of Lama as well. These are all bronzes and are they not intended to patinate um, as outdoor? Stuff? Right, but right. But the problem with Amma was that she was pitting. So uh, it was felt that she she really needed a good, you know, cleaning and restoration, I believe. I, I don't remember all the specific technical details, but we, we uh, researched and got a company from, I believe it was St. Kate's, mm -hmm. Diane, who came yeah. up and, yes, and restored the, you know, I mean, polished the statue and, you know, put a, a protective coating on it. Because exactly. we do have unique challenges here with the saltwater environment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, I guess we'll go through the guidelines. So, Jim, real quick on the budget. Oh, sure. is, is there a location or I'm, I'm kind of thinking of a dashboard or, or something that we, we get a snapshot of where we currently stand. It doesn't have to be monthly, but just as you know, quick reference to here's where we think the money's going to go. Here's what we spent so far. You know, I've not seen much of that, and I just didn't know if that's something that we should look at? Well, the thing is that, uh, you know, our expenditures are kind of larger and less frequent, which probably explains the lack of, you know, almost like a monthly accounting. I mean, we could certainly ask, you know, Diane and or Marissa would be able to give us figures, which they get from the finance office. Yeah. You know, if you if you if you feel it's necessary, I mean, some months we've we've had no expenditures at all. So yeah, you know. just just kind of to the point of of maintenance. What what does it take to really maintain the inventory we currently have? Just I don't know the answer to that, and that's just one of those things that's that's hanging out there as to right. how we how we divide those those expenses up. Well, um, a lot of you know. Uh, kind of routine maintenance is actually done by public works, so it doesn't cost us anything. And, uh, you know, as I said, it would only be something extraordinary like the, you know, bronze statues. You know, uh, you know, sometimes the, uh, you know, the Public Art Committee a couple of years ago did a series of um, artistic bike racks around town, and sometimes they need to be, you know, tweaked or, you know, like the hands on the clock of the uh, bike rack in front of the depot, you know, you know, historical society museum is constantly kind of flopping down. So somebody will go over and tighten the bolts. But, you know, for the most part, we really, you know, don't have anything, you know, so, like the NIADs, all of that is maintained by the city. Okay, you know, so to simplify it a little bit, if we take the 274 less the 16 for the art boxes, Mm -hmm. You know, we are, we have that, those funds available. Um, the only caveat being if it's over a $15,000 expenditure, it needs to go in front of the BOC for approval. Is that kind of? Absolutely. Correct. Okay. Okay. Diane, you had your hand up. Um, yes, I was just, um, and a lot of this information is in the ordinance itself. So um, like on um, page nine of the ordinance, it says uh, monies in the public art fund shall be used for commissioning, display, and acquisition of public art, including artist design fees, artist residency fees, purchase price, transportation, installation, and site preparation related directly to the installation of public art. It says general improvements to the surrounding site and location up to a maximum of 15% of the artwork cost. Maintenance of public art owned by the city of Tarpon Springs, including fees paid to the professional conservators and the original artists for conservation and repair. So um, they do put a certain amount into like a maintenance fund. Mm -hmm. So we have that, you know, to, um, you know, go ahead and upkeep the artwork. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and I, I guess a, a large portion of what we're gonna be talking about today is to possibly, you know, look at the uh, kind of wish list from the board of commissioners and discuss some, you know, future projects, you know, coming down the pike. So, um, you know, we, you know, we serve at the, you know, uh, at the pleasure of the board of commissioners, but you know we we are here because we're we do have a certain expertise and you know uh, in the arts. So to some extent, we're an advisory you know committee on the arts to the board of commissioners, but they have the you know the final decisive you know powers. Um, and I think you you all got I know Diane sent out the uh, notes from the uh, board of commissioners workshop. I did not get them. I did not get them. You didn't get them, Trish? I've looked went, through all I looked through all my emails and there was nothing from Diane. Hmm. Uh, no. Yeah, you seem to be having I, trouble with that. I don't know why you're not getting them. Because it's yeah. not kicked back to me. You know? Yeah. Could she be going in a spam folder or well, you know, I get I get some, but then some like that I don't. Let me I can yeah. check quick and see there's anything but I don't right mm -hmm. um well these you know I don't know if you want to go through these or, or, well right now we're talking about the guidelines so um I guess we'll have to take a does everybody have a copy of the guidelines I have the guidelines I have the guidelines from the minutes from last year's um, are those the guidelines? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should say uh, 2019 draft on the bottom uh, front page. Yeah, let me get to the front page. Um, it is 2019, yes. 516, okay. 2019, yeah. Okay. The guidelines, I think, are complete there. I, I still haven't found your master plan. Okay, that was sent out as well. <laughs> People are having trouble with their emails. Um, okay, uh, most most of the guidelines are basically boilerplate that that were never changed. Um, you know the goals, the mission statements, the funds. Okay, um, and um, if we go to page four at the bottom, expenditure approvals. Okay, the one change that was suggested was um, uh, agreements for expenditures of more than $15,000 must be approved by the Board of Commissioners. And that was to bring it into uh, agreement with the ordinance. Michiela? I'm sorry, but I'm looking at the email I got from Diane and I cannot find the document that says the guidelines. So when you're saying you're on page four or whatever, I can't follow along. I do have the email. It, what is the exact name of the thing? Because I have five attachments, and uh, okay, but none that says sent, that. It was sent earlier. Um, it was not sent on Friday. Um, Friday. Let me see if I could resend it. It's just it's all all in one document called General Guidelines and Master Plan. So they're both together. If you knew what date it was, I can search for it. Um, I have a folder with all the public art committee emails. It, it was sent out on Monday, June 8th. There was the amendments. Um, it was in like a thread of three. It should have been in one of those. Thank you very much. I'll look for it then. Sorry to interrupt, but I can't follow along if I can't find the document. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Trish, you right. might wanna look in yours for, for June 8th. Too. Yeah. I'm but sorry. Anyway, the, the, uh, you should look in, in your emails for June 8th too to get the um, master plan and guidelines. But you all should have it because we gave you all a copy. But I went while back. Oh, I have that. I have I have an old copy of the uh, guidelines and master plan. Um, I don't have the one on the that was just sent, but I have the original one. Yeah. Let's see, June 8th. It should say 2019 draft on the bottom. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's what mine does, yeah. Okay, so, I read the correct document. Yeah. Okay. I was just looking for uh, the document that Diane sent out with all the comments. I didn't get that one. That's the one that I didn't get. Okay. As, all uh, right. But the, the agreements for the expenditures, that basically just brings this, uh, the guidelines up to, um, or uh, puts it in an um, agreement with the ordinance. Okay. And then if we go to page six, at the very top, again, it's the uh, TSPAC can spend up to $15,000 for any approved items without additional BOC or designee action. So in other words, if like the art boxes, that was already approved by the BOC and if that expenditure had been under $15,000, we, we could have just gone ahead and order it. But because it exceeded 15,000, it had to go through the, the uh, purchasing department. This is just basic housekeeping. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this? Okay. Moving down to the to the bottom of the uh, bulleted list in the middle of the, the document, we added preliminary project descriptions and budgets will be presented to the BOC for approval in the annual plan. In addition, each project further defined in scope and budget will be resubmitted for BOC approval. Okay, so basically what we're saying is that any major project that we're thinking about doing before we proceed, we'll have to get the, uh, the approval of the Board of Commissioners. Um, a couple of years ago, um, the reason for this, I call it the NIADS fiasco. And um, basically the, the, the PAC worked for a year spent quite a bit of money on calls to artists uh, and actually got two very promising proposals to do a uh, base treatment for the NIAD statue in the roundabout on the sponge docks. And when it came before the board of commissioners, they had actually voted on, a, on, a, on one of the proposals and then decided that that's not what they wanted. So all of that just, you know, went down the tubes. All of the work that the artists put into their proposals, everything was just cast to the wind. So uh, we kind of learned our lesson. And from now on, we're going to be getting, you know, approval, you know, for projects before we proceed any further. Any questions, comments? Sure. Just one point of clarification for me. The annual plan, is that the same as our master plan or is it another document beyond the master plan? No, it's it's the, uh, it's, it's well, the thing is, as Diane said, we could decide to do an annual plan or a master plan up to five years. Is that correct, okay. Diane? I turn it off to be safe and <laughs> <laughs> anyway my miming was that um, yes you can do um, an annual plan because um, the chair has to report on that to the BOC on an annual basis of what your projects are mm -hmm. uh, but you, uh, a lot of times a lot of master plans have you know a plan for up to five years so that's something you all can decide. Okay, so that's, yes, Lucien? I believe the ordinance is pretty specific about requiring a master plan for the next five years, every mm -hmm. five years. So then it would seem that each annual plan would just be a, a, um, an action plan for that coming mm -hmm. budget. Right. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. 
Yep. Okay. Um, and then again, still on page six in the bulleted list uh, under the Board of Commissioners, it's voting on all contracts for services or purchases exceeding $15,000. And again, that's basic housekeeping. Um, going to page seven, um, the role of the city manager. Joan? Uh, yes, Lucian, sorry. Can we back up to bottom sure. of page six? Sorry. Um, no, no problem. There is another duty that the BOC has, which is arriving at a consensus of possible sites for public art projects that is written into the ordinance. Um, right, that's in, that's in the bullet point right above the one I just mentioned. Approving recommendations, blah, blah, blah. Acquisition, allocation, display, placement, and location of works of art. Actually, it's a preliminary step to the PAC developing the master plan. Okay, so how would you change the wording on that? Or uh, would you, or would you add a, a bullet point? I would add a bullet point saying, directing the PAC by consensus of sites to be con to be included in master plan. That's, that's awkward, but the, that's, that is what the ordinance says. Directing the PAC by consensus? On sites to be considered in the five-year master plan. Marissa, did you get that? Yes. Okay. okay. Any other uh, comments? Okay. I guess it'll be up to the Board of Commissioners for them to determine what their own consensus is. Okay, uh, under the role of the city manager, uh, reviewing and signing all artist agreements and other services up to $15,000. So even though we don't have to get a BOC approval for, you know, the benchmark, you know, up to $15,000, it still has to be approved and signed off by the city manager. Okay, any, any comments? One of the, Joan, excuse me. One of the things I might mention um, is that um, in order for him to have a clear understanding of the project and everything, you know, it'd be good to give him the site selection. And if we need to vet it with any of the city departments, just to make sure it's viable. And um, okay, we can yeah, we've been doing that, but we that be before a good idea to codify it. Okay, so uh, how would you like to phrase that? Coordinating with the city manager and city departments on placement and installation of art projects? Mm -hmm. Prior to the um, city manager receiving it, you know, to coordinate with any um, city departments that um, may have involvement, you know. Okay. Prior to, the, uh, you know, submitting to the city manager. Would that be prior to or, or subsequent to? I. I would say prior to because he's going to come back and ask, well, where are you putting this and, you know, have you vetted it with the other departments, you know, like for installation issues or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we could make it both prior to and or subsequent to. Mm -hmm. Because that would basically make it his decision as to whether he wants to uh, pre-approve the locations and uh, you know site issues with the departments before you know he gets the project or after. Is that making sense?
Yeah, and if you go down toward the bottom of the page, we have partnerships with city departments. Affected departments will assign a liaison to provide or coordinate department input. So that's kind of spelled out there on the bottom of page seven. Okay. All right, page eight, Bill, if you look about two thirds down the page, there's the finance, the role of the finance department. So that might answer some of your questions also about the, uh, the budget. Okay, and uh, the top of page nine, uh, the bullet points, priority themes for public art. I think that was some of these things came up in the compilation of the committee comments. Family, children, and ethnic diversity, nature, water, and the environment, sense of place through the city's unique history and culture, and color and texture which I would assume Lucienne would give you, that would open the door to, you know, abstract pieces. Anybody want to comment on that or make any additions or changes? I think it pretty much covers everything. Okay. And then again, on page 10, there's the public art selection jury. Oh, Lucianne, I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. Uh, this is really a question to the rest of the committee. Sure. Uh, there, I couldn't find any specific um, reference in the guidelines or any place else on um, how we actually accept artists' proposals for specific sites. I know we have artists come to us from time to time and say, I want to do X, Y, or Z. And my question for discussion is, should we have an open period each year um, mm -hmm. so that artists all sort of were on the same page and had an equal opportunity to propose a project for one of the master plan sites question. Okay, well, um, Diane, I believe has a, um, there's a provision on the website for artist proposals and there's a form that goes to Diane. Diane, do you want to elaborate on that? And it's, it's always open. There's, there's no, uh, like an open season, it's always open for, uh, you know, artist proposals. I don't think they have specific mm -hmm. sites though, do they, Diane? Um, no, it, it's just, it's basically a form that if an artist has an idea for um, a public art piece, um, no matter what media it is, um, they can fill out, it kind of gives them the steps to create a proposal. And then once they have that proposal completed, it's emailed to me or given to me that there's other, you know, uh, samples or whatever. And um, then what I do is I bring it to the next public art committee meeting, whenever that's scheduled, we put it on the agenda that you mm -hmm. have an artist's, you know, proposal to review. So, you know, that's kind of how it's done. I mean, because there may be people, you know, there might be artists out there that have a great idea that maybe you know, you all have not thought of. And um, mm -hmm. so, you know, that gives them the opportunity to bring it forth any time of the year. You know, you can change that if you'd like, but it's, it is out there and we have had people fill it out. Mm -hmm. 
Lucienne, does that kind of answer your question or, or satisfy what, where you were going with, with this? Oh, I was just asking for yeah. you know, the pulse of the committee uh, on mm -hmm. whether we needed to give artists um, an idea of what the BOC and we are, what sites we are looking at specifically. Right, I think if we, Diane, correct me if I'm wrong. I think if we if we are looking at a specific site for a piece of art, then that would become a call to artists rather than just so. an artist proposal. The artist proposals are kind of um, a little more freewheeling, if I could use that word. In other words, somebody could just approach us and say, you know, I want to build a you know a lighthouse on the sponge docks. And then we would take that under consideration, whereas a call to artists would be, we have a location on the sponge docks and we want you to submit a concept for that specific location. Then that goes out as a call. I believe to be fair, it has to be a call to artists. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, does everybody kind of get the distinction between the open proposals and the calls to artists? Uh, Robert? Isn't, it, isn't it that the, uh, if somebody makes a proposal, I'd like to do something, uh, here's my idea, I wanna make a lighthouse on Dota Canise, that you'd say, mm -hmm. well, you'd, you'd uh, sort of steer them towards that open call. Mm -hmm. and if, if they miss that open call, they miss that open call. That's the thing, you know, that's, that's the way well, there's there's no there's no time restrictions on the open on the proposal submissions. On the proposal sessions, I mean, so no submissions. There's no there's no time frame. It's open all the time. Anybody could. All, yeah, but at some point you have a call for artists, right? And then you have to make a selection. Right, that, but that's discriminating between the two mechanisms. One's right. a, a, an artist proposal, yes. which. The, the artist himself, herself instigates and submits versus like as Lucienne says, a site specific project, in which case that would be a call to artists and it would be, we would get responses. It's like call and response, you know. Uh, yes, the, the, the call and response I get, the other one I don't. Um, what, what don't you get about the open, the proposals? The open one is that somebody can just name something and say, I want to do something here and there, and uh, I want you to pay for it. Well, but, it's not quite that simple. First, it has to be, you know, vetted by the committee and then approved by the Board of Commissioners. Okay, so you'd be making up a slot for, for this person. Right. If I, yeah. I guess if the committee decided that it was something that we'd want to pursue, then we'd take it the next step. Trish? Here. You're Trish, muted. You're muted. You're muted. That, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. You, that's easy to forget. Um, yes, continuing what Robert was talking about. Uh, if an artist proposed a, a certain place and a certain art and um, the committee okayed it and then it went before the BOC and they approved it, at that point, would it have to go out to, uh, as a call to artists for other artists to um, no nope. bid on the project? Okay. No. Okay. Now, once, once so it was it, approved by both the PAC and the BLC, then- It would go to that artist that, that proposed it in the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. And the sponge ducks idea that Kevin had proposed, you know, it's on hold, but that was one of those where he filled out the form that Diane sent. Michaela, and, I'm I'm a, I'm afraid that you'll have to recuse yourself on. Oh, I know. I'm not. I'm just explaining that that's one of those pro projects that mm -hmm. came through the website. I'm not commenting on the project itself. I'm just saying that's an example to show you. You guys have okay. had those. That's it. I'm not actually commenting right. on the project itself. Okay. No. okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. 
has been on the other end of call for artists and things like that. I've never really run into one of these. <laughs> now you're going to be on the giving side instead of the, <laughs> the responding side. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, if we could go to uh, page 11. And it kind of touches on what we're talking about, uh, about the approval of artist or artwork. It's the first paragraph on the top. In other words, if something, is, if we create a jury, it's just the mechanism for, it says if the agreement award is $15,000 or less, the TSPAC will notify the a city manager of the recommendation and request the city manager proceed with the agreement negotiations. If the award is greater than $15,000, the PAC will send the recommendation to the city manager for review, agreement, preparation, and then transmittal to the board of commissioners. Again, I guess it's just a, you know, setting up that $15,000 benchmark, the, you know, the, the mechanism. Okay, any comments or questions on that one? Okay, on page 12, the fourth paragraph is on diversity. I think some, some of the committee members had some uh, questions about, uh, you know, diversity and art in the city. Okay, I, I can't see where you are, Joan. I'm looking at page 12 and I don't see it. Okay, it's, uh, the fourth paragraph down, there's public participation, education and outreach, citizen involvement and diversity. Okay, that's not on the page 12 that I'm looking at. Okay. Um, so if you're looking at the paper copy, it's on page 13. I'm sure um, Ms. Okay, Jones is looking at the you. digital copy. They're like a page off. Oh, okay. So. I see it now. You're right. Yep. It's on. Okay. okay. All right. As I said, it came up at the last meeting discussion of, uh, you know, increasing diversity. So there are, you know, uh, provisions for it in the uh, in the guidelines. OK. Uh, OK, the other. OK, does anybody have any questions or comments or uh, Lucien? Uh, not on diversity, but on um, the two paragraphs, public participation and citizen involvement. They right. Seem, they seem to be saying the same thing, but again, um, question for the other committee members. Do we want residents actually designing and installing the projects? That seems like the nitty gritty that will be contracted to the artist. Right. Do you feel that the uh, citizen involvement uh, should be, or one of those points should be deleted? Probably well, I the think they are saying the same thing. So, right. That, yeah. So, you want to delete that as redundant? Yeah. But my bigger okay. question is involvement of interested residents in the actual planning, design, installation, and maintenance. Um, those seem to be either artist functions or city staff functions. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's a question for the group. Right. Any other comments? Bill, do you have any, any thoughts on this yeah, one? I, I agree with Lucienne. It, it's very specific in the way it says, you know, their involvement in the actual planning design and installation. I don't know that. <laughs> But are they talking? Are they talking about um, uh, public? You know, the public just giving their ideas about these. That they're not talking about them actually doing it. I'm sure. I think it. Well, that's that's what actually what it sounds like. It says installation. I know it does, but it but it, would it be the ideas for the installation and maintenance or actually doing it? I don't think that's clear. Yes. So that's one one good reason to do you think it should be deleted or reworded i would I delete it be, they did i think it's confusing i think it should be deleted okay <laughs> theo do you have any thoughts about you know deletion or amending 
Um, I think we can just get rid of it. Okay, Lucy Ann, how do you feel? Dolly? Sorry, we're all <laughs> guilty. Um, I think it would be okay to leave planning in. Uh, uh, the rest of it, I think, is too specific, or it can be deleted. No huge preference for me. Okay. Well, the overwhelming opinion seems to be deletion. Bill, do you have any? No, no I agree. No. Okay. All right. So we'll, that'll be deleted. Marissa, you've got that right. Okay. Um, just for clarification, you're talking about deleting both of those paragraphs. No, so just the one where it says citizen involvement. Just citizen involvement paragraph? Correct. Okay, and leave the other one as is? Yes, public participation remains. Okay, thank you. Okay. In the public participation paragraph, it does actually still include what Lucianne said about that their interest residents in the actual planning design and installation. So as she mentioned, maybe we should just do in the actual planning and leave off the design installation and maintenance, even in the public participation paragraph. Yeah, that makes sense. How does everybody else feel about it? I so it would that. be. Thank mm -hmm. you, Ms. Shayla. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to delete design, installation, and maintenance. Okay. Good catch, everybody. Okay. Is there anything else on that, or can we put the uh, guidelines to bed? Okay, and obviously there, there's a change on the cover. You know, uh, Diane is just updating. You know, it still has the library and Denise, so that can be updated. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the guidelines as amended. I move that we accept the guidelines as amended. Do I have a second? I second. I think we on this one we need a. Uh, was that you, Machila? Yes, who, sec was. who seconded? I tried to second it. Okay, but I think on this we need a a, a second from the uh, the actual committee. So I need a second from either Bill, Lucian, or Theo. I'll second it. Okay, thanks, Bill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Okay, so we now have uh, adopted the guidelines as amended. Okay. Now we're moving on to the master plan. And, you know, that was, uh, you know, as indicated earlier, that was part of the, uh, the attachment. And it comprises pages 16 and 17. I have page 27 through 30. Okay, because it's only, well, it's the development of the original public art program master plan. Okay, now this, this one's going to need needs some work. Okay. Well, first there's a there's a listing of uh, completed projects. Right. And I don't know whether you want to keep building on these or do you want to um, delete them and just add the current projects? Diane, what, what would you suggest on this one? Hmm. They're 
pretty old, you know. So mm -hmm. um, since you're revising it, you know, those could be in the archive because we have a big archive of public art projects. Mm -hmm. so, um, and some of the members, um, you when you got your notebooks, I don't know if you remember, um, Michelle and um, Robert, they're going to get theirs before the next July meeting. But um, in the back of your notebooks, you had a thumb drive. They used to put the history of the art on um, uh, CDs, you know, but they're not, you're not using that anymore. So we put it on thumb drives. I did not get that. That was not in okay. my book. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll get you one. I have, I have the CD. Yeah. You have the CD. It depends on how long you've been with the public art committee. <laughs> I, I have the five and a half inch floppy. <laughs> the VH okay. tape. All right. So how does everybody feel about deleting the old projects or uh, Lucianne? I sort of like having them there for context. I think it um, it illustrates where the committee and city have, has been in the recent past and where it's mm -hmm. looking to well, go. Yeah. I'm right. Like yeah, maybe just change I mean, the wording of under the for Yeah. Yeah. You know, or maybe um, just, you know, maybe put a, well, most of them seem to have a date. Um, mm -hmm. They do. Okay. 11, 14, 18, and 19. Right. Now the city entrances, um, <laughs> The PAC designed the gateway signs, but I know that they were altered and went through a lot of um, various permutations and combinations that were dictated by F dot. So I don't know whether we should leave that in there. Were they, question, were they actually yes, done, I'm gonna ask a question uh, about that. Where are they, because I don't, they were actually, still they're, They're still being worked on to the best of my knowledge. Right. Well, this this is um, under the completed projects section. Right. The, the, well, we, com we completed the design for it, but then off it went into the, you okay. know, another world of the bureaucracy. Right. It's not a completed project then. I would take it out. Okay. How does everybody else feel on that one? I, I agree. I think it should come out. Anyone? Okay. So Marissa, if you could uh, delete the city entrances. Okay. Okay. The um, and the outdoor sculpture celebrating the library that isn't quite completed, but we're teetering on the verge of it. So I'm wondering whether we should leave it in or not. As soon as they, as soon as a construction company takes down, you know, that whole area mm -hmm. where they're storing stuff because they're still completing some outside things, some porticos. So um, maybe as soon as they take that down, we could get it, you know, installed. So I see that, you know, being done this, you know, year. Okay. Okay. Um... All right, uh, so I guess we, we're looking at this. Our, it'll definitely be within this fiscal year, right? Anticipating all the... Well, fiscal year for the city or, or year for us? Um, <laughs> I, I, that's a good question. I'm, I'm not sure how long, I, I'm not sure how long it's gonna take, you know, for the exterior um, stuff to be done. You know, it depends on weather and so many things. So I would say it'll be maybe probably done within the year 2020. Okay. So why don't we just leave it the way it is when, when renovations are com uh, completed? Okay, now we go to the 2019 revised master plan that never really got off the ground. So this would become the 2020 revised master plan. Okay.
Okay, so we have the goals and objectives uh, established by the ordinance, the city's comprehensive plan, downtown development plan, and the general guidelines. Um, public art program master plan endorses project selection that provides a diversity of public art types from large city icons to artist made benches and a diversity of places from highways to public buildings and parks. Do you think we should be making benches? I don't know. I think I think this 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 bears some uh, revisions here. Um, Lucy Ann, there were I tell when your hands going up now. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of wonderful points made by every member of the of the committee um, in their submissions to you. Maybe now is the time to go back to that format and um, build from, from each of those. Okay, so I, what I'm gonna suggest is we look at rewording the balanced and diverse approach because I, I don't think we wanna be tied into, I don't even know what a large city icon is and I don't think we want to be making benches and uh, putting things on highways and and you know that sort of thing. Um, yeah, we can't do that. We can't put things on highways anyway because they're not our property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the highways are not city property. Uh, how would how would everybody feel about deleting? Um, in that paragraph, uh, putting a period after art types and then just deleting the rest of that sentence. Jack selection that provides for a diversity of public art types. Yeah. Does that work for everybody? Good to me. Okay, I think it gives us a lot more flexibility. And as I said, I don't think we wanna be making art benches. Um, Okay, Excuse public me. art, the parks. Parks are one of the main community facilities in Tarpon Springs and therefore are important locations for citizens to experience the full range of public art types. Public art and parks must meet <clears throat> certain special criteria related to the presence of active children, park maintenance method and each park's unique character. In addition to our existing beautiful parks, additional micro or respite parks are desirable. They might consist of a single bed with a bench with shade at intervals along the art and history trail. They should incorporate or provide a view of public art. Now, uh, going into a little history here, at one point, the PAC was working on an art and history trail, but it was taken over by the Department of Economic Development. So it, it kind of, you know, um, you know, I don't know what they're doing about an art and history trail, whether they're doing anything. Um, yeah. Diane? Yes, they are. Um, there are plaques that they've got and um, signage of, I, I can't remember exactly how many there are, but um, I know they're, they're being ordered and they're gonna be installed. So I think we have the first group you know, that's been approved by the Board of Commissioners that they're going to be installing. But those are for historic purposes. Right. OK. Um, should we delete that section? I would. I was just reading it. It doesn't make any sense to what we're doing. So mm -hmm. I would pick, I would pick it out. Excuse me, I'm sorry, but I'm looking at the various documents and are you looking at the revised January 2020 TSPAC master plan? Because I'm not finding the wording that you're looking for. Uh, I have the uh, uh, 2019 draft. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not sure I have that one. Okay, because I, I'm having a tough time finding the wording. I'm looking at the revised thing that was sent to me. 
It's at the you, very end of the general guidelines document that we were just reviewing. It's just the last couple of pages. Oh, okay. But it's attached to the same document. Okay, thanks. Just as a point of information, before I confirmed, confirmed with Diane exactly what documents we were looking at, I pulled my files out and they were an inch and a half high just on the guidelines and master plans. So there's been a lot done on this. Okay, um, now we come to the real nitty gritty, the public art program master plan for 2019, 2024. And I guess that becomes 2020 to 2025. Establishes six main functions for the public art program during the next five years. A mural program, urban furnishings, public art that connects downtown Craig Park and the sponge docks, public art or information or art information kiosks along the Pinellas Trail. We kind of discussed that one. Creative integration of technology to develop art projects that promote the uniqueness of Tarpon Springs. That was kind of the art box project. Inspiration, sometimes uh, places for public art projects that seem perfect to create a sense of place that many people will appreciate. The public art program will always remain open to this discovery. Okay. Um, I think we discussed at the last meeting that the murals will be on city property. So maybe we could add mural program on city owned property. Okay, urban furnishings. What does that mean? Thank you, Robert. <laughs> I, th I think we're back to the benches. <laughs> I, 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 th I think I think when the when the pack did the um, uh, bike racks, that was considered a, a type of urban furnishing. What about the recycle bins? The go uh -huh. bins. Right, Bill. How are we? Uh... The uh, solar, the solar, um, um, solar art. Yeah, um, that's the technology integration of technology. But the yeah, the urban furnishings would be the. Uh, the... Be fish, yeah, yeah. recycling. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, Lucianne. Yeah, um, I'm a broken record, and I apologize for the repetition. But we are supposed to be naming locations in the mat in the five year master plan rather mm -hmm. than projects per se of course the projects will follow but um that is the okay chance. well let's let's do it that's what we're here for so you want to we want to give some specific locations of city owned property for uh, future art projects that's what we are asked to do and i think we should or okay we want to, continue to have misunderstandings between the two groups. Right. Okay. Um, I do have a list of a map here of city owned properties. Um, now, do we want to polish this off today so what we can include it in the in the uh, presentation to the BOC on the 23rd? Or we do we want to wait until we get those GIS renderings, Lucienne? Um, I, we really haven't considered what each of the committee members submitted, so uh, a lot of those points are valid. And um, right, okay. Well, the thing is that the um, okay, uh, myself and um, Michila. Uh, mentioned murals, Nichila, Trish, and I was, you know, uh, uh, discussing the uh, website. Uh, the Bahamian sponge hooker statue was myself and Michila. Uh, the trail, uh, unfortunately, any consideration of stuff along the trail is kind of moot now that it's uh, county property. Um, Young and student artists, that would be the art boxes among, and, and 
probably some of the mural projects on, on the city owned property. Uh, Bill, you wanted a map of the uh, city owned properties and uh, both you and Lucianne wanted to prioritize locations, which is I guess what we're talking about now. I think your questions about the budget, I hope were answered. Okay. And then uh, the five-year plan, which is kind of what we're working on. Um, Michiela uh, mentioned public art in the parks and doing a photo catalog of artwork. Um, Trish was um, concerned about BOC approval and uh, she suggested a municipal survey of municipalities about the um, the murals and the liability insurance, which we did, I believe, in January. I think Jules had taken that on. She she uh, assigned everybody a municipality or two, and I think we discovered that the uh, insurance liability issues were basically uh, universal. Diane, is my recollection correct? Yes, and I compiled, you know, all of them that I received, and you all reviewed that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I did receive them. Yeah. Okay, uh, Theo, uh, you didn't have any particular suggestions, and Lucianne, you know, again, what we're talking about now, wanted to prioritize locations. It's kind of a distillation of what everybody wrote. Does anybody have any additional? comments about you know what their suggestions or interests were Jared, on, on, on my interest site somehow i wanted to get out of the three ring binder and the, the you know the, the master plan that's in a notebook someplace and get onto uh, call it a dashboard or somehow come up with a you know road map of where we're going and and the projects mm -hmm. that are in the pipeline and something that we can all look at in one, almost one page and say, here's what we want to do. And here's where we stand on all these things. Um, mm -hmm. And part of that's the GIS with the mapping. And so it, it's kind of taken the next step beyond the actual plan in the three ring binder and saying, okay, here, something real easy for you to go to the BOC with and say, look, and everybody instantly looks at it and goes, oh, I know <laughs> what you're doing now. And then it becomes very easy to uh, to see, you know, how we're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, you, do you think that there might be um, a positive aspect of putting something like that on our website that would be, you know, available only to the committee members? Well, I think, you know, you've got two levels. You've got our operational. And then I think what you know, with almost an infographic to go out to the public and say, look what's happening here. And almost, you know, tooting our own horn with, here's what art's doing in, in, in Tarpon Springs. So mm -hmm. I think we, we, we've got to do the first one first before we can take it to that next level. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, maybe GIS, maybe she can start populating the current inventory where everything resides uh, mm -hmm. across the city properties and across the city itself. And you know, maybe we just build on that as our, our, our tool. I'm looking more for some of the tools to help us manage this um, mm -hmm. as opposed to having a three ring binder that we go back to and we only go back to it when, we're, when we wanna look you know, for, for some guidance. I think that's a great idea. My, my one reservation is I don't know whether we could get this up and running by the 23rd of June. It's not, you know, you know, with with the yeah. with the situation, you know, with you know the quarantine, people yeah. not being at their desks yeah. and trying to, you know, put together something like yeah. this. I mean, it's it's not that simple to come up yeah. with. It's going to take us some time to put those tools together, that toolbox that we need to to move forward. Mm -hmm. So I understand the importance yeah. of the document that we're working on because you need something to present to the BOC, but I. Right. And, and I put my thoughts together. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. Yeah, well, what I, um, I just want um, just some clarification, if you don't mind, because there's a bunch of different art around the city of Tarpon Springs. Some of it is privately done and some of it is 
public art committee, you know, driven, but there's a ton, you know, and then we've got like that whole um, list that's on the CD or the, and the thumb drive of art that has been um, donated to the city over many, many years. That's, you know, uh, historic and some of it is in storage and, and some of it is at the library and, you know, so it's in different places, you know, kind of thing. So when you say you want a GIS map of where the art is, are you saying public uh, committee art or all the art? Because that might be a little bit daunting. I was thinking the public art. Okay. Um, you know, what we've been responsible for as a committee and as, and as a city. Um, mm -hmm. And again, to help make some of the decisions going forward, what type of art are we sh have a short supply of and we need to, to focus on? And then also where geographically throughout the city are we not doing enough so that mm -hmm. we know where to put our efforts so we know how to allocate, you know, going forward. This is what we want to focus on and this is where we want to try to put it. Just a thought. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, that sounds very much in sync with what Lucienne wants to do about prioritizing, you know, locations for the art in the city. Is that correct, Lucienne? Are, are, are you kind of on the same page? Yeah. Okay, it's kind of, as you know, as Diane said, it's kind of daunting. Um, you know, I mean, it's not, it's, do it's not daunting, but to try to get something like that done for the 23rd, um, and Joan, you'll and on the, the guidelines of things that you that everybody sent in, Lucianne's um, last page there uh, has like a list of different things too that everybody might look at as well. Just to you know, Lucianne, I have an idea about the meeting on the twenty third, and my my position is let's not be driven by a, a deadline. Um, can, can't you tell them what we are doing? Yeah, usually the, the thing is that by ordinance, we have to uh, submit a, an annual report. So to some extent, I am being driven by a deadline. So it's, um, well, there, there are a lot of things that you'll be able to report completion mm -hmm. on, but I would also think there is room in there to report progress on an ongoing effort, which this is. Right, and this is also our opportunity to bring projects before the BOC that we'd like to get them to approve. So that's why this, um, the, you know, these items in the master plan are so important. You know, I mean, do we want to do a statue? Do we want to do major projects? Do we want to do student murals on the on the on the on the different walls? Do we want to do all of the above? We have to give them some kind of, um, you know, at least a loose project projection of what we might be planning. A lot of those conversations we really haven't had yet. Um, I know. So I, I personally, I think that, uh, and I have spoken to some people about it. I don't think that this Zoom format is particularly conducive to to this particular committee. Um, I've always felt that a big part of the arts is communication and interaction and. It's very difficult to do it in, in, in this kind of setting. And I also think it's rather difficult. Um, I mean, that beautiful new, new room that they created for, um, you know, all the committee meetings, it, to me feels like a courtroom and it's perfect for planning and zoning, you know, mm -hmm. where you're looking at rules and regulations and applying them to each case. But you know, uh, the arts are more fluid. You know, they, they need, you know, when we were meeting in the library, somebody would bring in some, oh, look at this, look what I found and push papers around. And there would be, you know, discussions and a lot more interaction on the committee. 
And I kind of miss that. I feel like, you know, uh, in some ways I almost feel like I'm almost pulling teeth to try to get, you know, feedback from you guys. And I know that you're all, you know, very involved, brilliant people and, you know, vested in the arts and in the community. And, you know, I, I just feel it needs more energy somehow. And uh, I don't know how the rest of you feel. Yeah, I feel the same way, Joan. Yeah. Absolutely agree with you, Joan. Mm -hmm. Are we required to meet at that location now? Is that a well, city uh, The thing is that, uh, you know, the city technologically has, you know, uh, decided that they wanted to do, you know, live broadcast of these. That's why we've been moved to that room. And, um, you know, to try to move to something that would be more conducive to the type of meeting we want to do. I don't even know if it's possible. Maybe changing some of the seating or some of the arrangements in that, you know, in that conference room might be a little helpful. But, um, Lucien, do you have any feelings on this or? I agree. It's a it's a difficult setting. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I you know I think we need to um, maybe I'll speak to Mark and see what we could do if anything about it. You know, I I've always felt that you know as I said the arts are so much different. Every everything else is kind of like got a legislative, you know, type of approach. And, you know, that room is perfect for, for those types of meetings, but I don't think they work for us. So, well, let's see what we can do and um, go from there. But uh, uh, does anybody have any ideas for some concrete projects they want to propose? I mean, um, I think we've discussed that Bahamian sponge hooker statue does everybody want to explore that further? Well, let me uh, just, I, I mentioned this the last last time that uh, um, about the Bohemian sponge diver um, being more of a literal sculpture. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, and I think what, what um, William's sort of asking for in, in things is, is a, a sense of knowledge, a vision of what the collection of Tartan Springs looks like. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I know you have, um, you know, the, the naiads and the mermaid and, and the, the, the Greek sponge diver. And those are, are pretty uh, formative projects in, in that they're, you know, they're expensive, they're cast bronze, they're, they're impressive and all that although they're very literal. Uh, and uh, I'm not um, against literal work. And I think in very many places it, it works. It, it does what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think there's a, a sense of continuity if that were to happen. You know? And I think to, to just be very straight, straight ahead with a Bahamian um, sponge diver, I think it's, you know, in a literal sense would work, especially side by side with the Greek sponge diver. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a question about whether as this committee and the city of Tartan Springs is sort of concerned about what the look of their collection is, you know, and, and uh, if it were to be an abstraction of a Greek sponge diver, I mean, that's, that, that could be carried out in, in a call for artists, uh, you know, that, that you, you get these kind of distances. But I think uh, that can be a very important uh, addition, a very important project to add to this, because most people don't know this at all. Mm -hmm. uh, moved to Tarpon, I read all the history books, and I was fascinated by it. Hey, listen to this. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so it, it, it goes to the to the diversity. I mean, especially nowadays, right now, like today, I think it's important that, that the city pursue that in, in uh, its diversity uh, uh, issue and its its equity issue. Is that the, we give we give the African American community an equity in the founding of this city, mm -hmm. and 
I think that is an important piece of public art and that it would give a dialogue uh, as to, to this. And uh, you know, there could be follow up to that, you know, and a, a plaque that's somewhat descriptive so that, um, you know, but I think too that, that you have some strong literal sculptures here. I mean, people really seem to get involved in them. I drive by the naiads a lot. And people are always sitting in amongst them and photographing mm -hmm. it, it. It's clearly a place and, and its location is good. And it, it, uh, the mermaid is, is something I see a lot of people getting photographs taken next to that. Mm -hmm. and of course, the sponge diver itself. So um, having quality uh, figurative uh, bronze sculptures, I think it can be a real asset to the city. And, uh, but I think you can, you can in, in other projects, you can try to go into other media, other kind of things, bring things up more into the 21st century in a way. But public art has its place in being, being uh, really informative to as many people as you can have it be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um... I agree with you, and I. But I, I, I would like to get the, the the statue in you know at least in a form where we could start doing a call to artists as a you know probable project. Lucien, um, my only comment is I would um i would like us to have a really firm uh, sense of the history of the bahamians um, mm -hmm. there were bahamians of african descent but there were also a lot of greeks uh based in uh the bahamas so uh, i know that maybe six years ago there was an exhibit in the and i just you feel like we ought to have up. a really factual foundation um, I feel as though we you, you kind of froze up. Could you just repeat the last part of what you said? I'm sorry. I'm just repeating that um, we need a really firm grasp of the history that we're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. There may not be one literal image that serves it. It may need to be a more nuanced um, mm -hmm. kind of piece. That uh, that acknowledges all the Bahamians and and the various uh, contributions they made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I this is something that you know we've been talking about for a while. I actively searched to see if we could find or I could find any photographs or anything of uh, you know the Bahamian sponge hookers, and I I really wasn't successful. As I said, the only thing I found. <laughs> studies by Winslow Homer. So, um, Diane? Um, uh, Tina Bukavalis, I, I believe, um, did a, uh, uh, an exhibit of the Bohemian sponge divers um, mm -hmm. that is up in our um, cultural center. So, you know, we could get that down again and put that exhibit up you know, to coincide with something that the public art committee, you know, would do a project, you know, it'd be kind of neat yeah. to have that back up, you know, to kind of complement whatever project you all decided to do. Just oh, that's thought. great. Yeah. That, yeah, that would be a great idea to, you know, combine the, the uh, exhibit with the, uh, with the statue. And you know, I'm I'm with both Lucianne and Robert. I I would really like to see some more abstract sculpture in in town, but I don't think this particular. I I also agree with Robert. I think that this particular project needs to be you know a little more representational, and uh, you know we are getting that abstract piece at, at Korea, so you know we are making strides there. So. And and can uh, I can I add something to it too? Sure. I mean, there's there's a plethora of artists who deal with 21st century concepts of realistic sculpture. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, very contemporary approaches to things. I mean, uh, it's a way they approach with the material or with, with uh, 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 a, a kind of a, a contextual thing that they can give to it. So uh, mm -hmm. 
you know, it's not like saying that that uh, a realistic sculpture is just going to be one of those boring kind of uh, just just a, you know, uh, I I don't know, a, you know, a uh, kind of nondescript statue. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not it's not that kind of thing. I think with the call of artists, especially if you make it national, you'll get a lot of different you get a lot right. of different interpretations on how to deal with this and. Uh, I think it's, it's uh, um, you know, we have an African-American community and I think this would be really something to go towards, mm -hmm. towards that uh, in, in, in the, how the city identifies with it. However, mm -hmm. however, you know, it is. I mean, you know, most people have this, the, the whole idea that the Greeks settled and, you know, founded Tarpon Springs and, and that's not the case. And uh, so, so that, you know, we we just can um, can start creating a little bit more of a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, so we're going to add the Bahamian sponge hooker to one of the projects. Um, let's see. We've got the urban furnishings. We've got uh, the. Uh, the artistic recycling receptacles. How do you feel about public art kiosks? Can you explain what you mean by that? Um, it says art information kiosks along the Pinellas Trail. Hmm. I, I, I think that since this was written, I think uh, the technology has marched on to be more like QR codes and things of that sort. Robert? Well, you have those those light boxes, which are you're going to place in very, you know, places around the city, right? And I think... Right, that, but this is, I think this is, uh, this is more of an informational type. Oh, an informational thing. It, yeah. Uh, yeah. Would that be along alternate 19? You know, there's that alt 19 uh, art development corridor. That's um, it's a countywide thing, I believe. But um, is there some way it could segue in with that? I mean, uh, an art kiosk or art signs or you know signage. Is that what it is? I mean, as I said, this this was done quite a while ago. Yeah, and I I know that we did have a. Uh, a discussion with uh, some people about uh, when we were still charged with doing the heart, art and history trail with like QR codes and that sort of thing. But, you know, uh, we're not working on that anymore. So, um, you know, uh, I, I think I feel comfortable with getting rid of that, just deleting that whole idea. It sounds to me to be more like a, a city function other than this particular, mm -hmm. and this is public art committee. And, uh, right. Uh, yeah. And I don't think, I don't think we have enough, you know, public art yet to, you know, warrant something like that. Uh, public art that connects downtown Craig Park and the sponge docks. That's something else I'm kind of nebulous. Public that may end up being one of the corridors that we're looking at for the uh, illuminated art boxes since we're not looking at the trail. Okay. Uh, just a thought. Right. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Uh... Okay, so we're back to prioritizing locations. I don't know how we can proceed with that right now. I mean, it's, as I said, I've got a map, but I'm not sure. It's kind of hard to read. My... Yeah, um, yes. Lucy Ann had provided that list from um, the DOC workshop and, oh, okay. and, right. ours, and our collective three. There was a lot of sites and ideas right. that were listed on there. That might be a jumping off point. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you for reminding me. Okay. Um, okay, so we've got the um, Cicadia Cemetery expansion. There was talk about doing a, a mural on the water tank on the golf course, the golf course itself, um, MLK and Alt-19. Uh, Lucianne, did you have a specific spot on that corner that you were? These were not my ideas. I compiled these from the um, recordings and minutes ah, of the VOCs. Okay. These are areas that were highlighted by different members of the VOC. And I think if the past is true, every time we appear before the VOC, we're going to be reminded of, um, of mm -hmm. these locations. I think the MLK slash Alt-19 was not the intersection, but the whole of MLK and then alternate 19 as two different locations, but okay. um, they, are, they are not my ideas. Okay. All right. Um, selfie ops, well, that would be the, uh, the murals that, you know, would go on the, uh, the, the city owned walls. Okay, Sisler Field, this is another one that keeps cropping up. Um, you know, they were talking about doing some sort of bust or pl uh, plaque in, in honor of Mr. Sisler, who was, I guess, very, um, you know, key in promoting a lot of the youth sports in Tarpon Springs. Do we want to take that on? Nobody? For some reason, I don't have what you're looking at, so I'm kind of lost. Okay, this was the uh, compilation of all of the comments from the committee. Oh, I didn't get it. Okay, I didn't get that, so. Okay. Um, okay, the Christmas cards around the bayou, I think we discussed doing that on the art boxes instead. Anybody have any feelings about that? So I know there's already, you know, they do the Lambathas and the other things around the, uh, around the bayou. Um, this is another one that keeps cropping up too, the lighthouse replica. Is any, is, are people familiar with that? I don't know whether that's, you know, an art project to do a replica of a lighthouse. Uh, you're talking about the, which which lighthouse? And Cloak. And Cloak. Actually, okay. actually, there there was. I'm digging into my my history here. I believe there was a lighthouse in the Sponge Exchange that had uh, uh, flags on it, and they wanted to. Uh, there was discussion of recreating that. I think that that is a an, an intriguing kind of thing, because that way you'd be able to get a sense of uh, that structure uh, and uh, a sense of abstraction to it, if you wanted that. It would not be a figurative piece. It would be something that's referencing it. I, I know the city of St. Petersburg's paying um, uh, Mark, uh, uh, what's the name, uh, to build the, uh, the, the Janus airplane, you know, mm -hmm. and you want a replica of that. and. Uh, but I think something like that would be, you know, if it were big enough, it were, you know, it's a big budget, I think, because it would be architectural in scale. Um, right, but it, they specifically talk about a replica. They want, they want to recreate what had been there, you know, back in what, the 20s and 30s. Sponge exchange and not the, uh, well, it could, could be a, you know, interpretation of the replica. Well, I think that's something that would have to come up before the Board of Commissioners, but I think when they say historic replica, I mean, I think they mean they want, they want, they, they want, they want a, to recreate. A, replace what had been there originally. Um, okay, okay. I, I'm just, just going to say something that, that the BOC is really not the art committee. 
but we serve at their discretion. Yes. No, that's really um, awesome. <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and that's what we're, that's what we're working off of, yeah. you know, Lucianne went to the trouble of compiling all of these points that were raised at BOC meetings. Yeah. But I and think, the thing, at the end of the day, we have to go back to them for approval. So, yeah. you know, Lucianne? I do think we can take that as a suggested list and um, the call can interpret uh, Lighthouse in any way it wants. Uh, mm -hmm. Replica would really not fall under public art. Um, right. Guidance. So yeah, I see a lot of flexibility if any of those strike a chord with the committee. Okay. Well, uh, just me, because I would be interested in that, but I can't do anything with it, but I, that's right up my alley. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, historic busts donated by families. I think that's kind of ambitious. I don't really see that working. The tennis wall in Craig Park, that's another one that, that keeps shifting gears and it has ever since I've been on this committee. Diane, do you know, uh, I mean, are they still talking about possibly reconfiguring that area around Craig Park? It's kind of like a moving target. I haven't heard any updates on that. Okay. Um, the Howard Park parking lot, again, that's county. Um, the downtown postcard murals, that was basically voted down by the PAC on a couple of occasions. Um, the Pinellas Trail um, was, again, county property. Um, around the bayous, that's definitely something that we could explore. Uh, and of course the dumpster corrals, that's uh, what we were talking about with the uh, student mural project. And if, you know, given the, uh, you know, the recent uh, comments by, you know, Mark LaCourus, I think that we could easily get that up and running. Um, Innis Park on Riverside Drive. Anybody? Diane? I just wanted to mention too, um, keep in mind when you're choosing locations that Tarpon Springs has a, a lot of beautiful parks and we also have our own marina which is apparently state-of-the-art um, mm -hmm. and um, you know we've have been praised for our marina and we have so many wonderful waterways you know, that people kayak and boat on all the time. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you're thinking of locations, think about some of those things too, because right. like, it, the, you know, kids, I like get one of the parks, there could be a piece of art that children could actually utilize, you know, or, mm -hmm. you know, so there's all kinds of different things that we could do. We're really very lucky as a city that our size to have, you know, dog parks, to have a fitness park, to have a splash mm -hmm. park and all these wonderful nature parks too. So just, like, okay. you know, my two cents. Okay. Robert. Can I go back to the Ennis park? Um, that's the first I've heard the Ennis is mentioned <laughs> in this. And yet there, George Ennis senior is an incredibly famous artist. And, uh, and George Jr., of course, lived here and, I, and uh, George Sr. built houses. I, I don't know why I don't hear more about the Ennises in, in Tarpon Spring. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that we can address? I don't, I'm not quite sure what the park is, Ennis Park. I know Ennis Drive, I walk around it all the time. Yeah, Lucienne? The park actually, and I learned this at my first PAC meeting when Sandra Holobar was one of our alternates. Mm -hmm. uh, I always assumed that it was part of a residential property, but if you're coming around Riverside Drive to where Park Avenue makes the hill from mm -hmm. Riverside Drive to Gulf Road, right. there is a Spanish style house that's yeah. back from Riverside and in front of it is a concrete footing that looks a little overgrown. I had all, I grew up thinking it was some fountain that got filled in, but that mm -hmm. in fact little 
pocket is in a spark. That, wow, that, thanks that, for the just, education. I was, yeah. I was, I had no idea where it was. Yeah. I, I thought it belonged to that house. I did too, I did yeah. too. Well, well that's that, definitely that, something we should look into. Yeah. Shall we add that to our, our list? I would say yes. I mean, because I think that's a real historical connection to to very early uh, uh, Tarpon Springs. And, uh, okay. and geography wise, I don't think there's anything else in the area around it that we've done. So I think mm -hmm. it's perfect. And it okay. seems like half the city of Tarpon Springs drives by it every day. <laughs> <laughs> right. I agree. Okay. So. So we have some murals on some city owned properties, um, the golf course, Sunset Beach, the, you know, the dumpster corrals. So that's definitely one that we could do. Um, I love that Innes Park. That's, that's a great idea. Um, uh, let's see. Um, we could certainly look into the marina. Diane, thank you. Um, Shall we consider Sisler Field? It keeps coming up. A little more information on that. I don't know whether it was Sisler himself, but somebody affiliated with that ballpark played for a team that later morphed into the Baltimore Orioles. Right, it was the St. Louis Cardinals, St. I think. St. Louis Browns. Ah, uh, that's right. That's right. So he that the, was the historical connection there. Right. Okay. I know that there was discussion about doing an outreach to the the, the teams to see whether they'd be interested in uh, doing a grant. Does that people feel that that's something we should explore? Okay. So. Marissa, I'm sure you've got just a big spaghetti bowl of notes on this one. It's all over the place, but maybe we could uh, sit down and get get this, you know, hammered out. Um, okay. Any more comments on the? Uh... I have a question. Sure. Okay. Uh, you guys mentioned Sunset Beach. I drove by there. Uh, yesterday to just look at the wall and the wall is small and it faces the the uh, water and everything so um, I wonder if uh, wind and sand, sand and salt would make it difficult to keep any artwork out there and have it stay in any decent shape but there were some electrical boxes on that wall that would really impair because it's not a huge wall uh, doing anything and I wonder before we even propose sites like that, is it possible for the city to consider if they would move the electrical boxes if we're really going to pursue uh, specific sites like that? The reason I'm asking is because if we say, oh, we would like to use city property and Sunset Beach wall is one of the ones, um, and then any artist goes to look at it and says, but there are these big boxes, they would really detract from the small wall that we have in the first place. Um, would it be up to the artist to pay for moving those kind of boxes? Or would we be able to check with the city first whether they would even consider moving them if they want something like that as a viable venue for a mural or some other kind of artwork? I'm just curious. Yeah, that sounds like it would be something that would be probably the decision of Duke Energy. We, we actually, in the past, considered uh, doing a project that well, it exists in a lot of other municipalities where they paint those um, those electrical boxes. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, the boxes in um, Tarpon Springs are all numbered and coded and they couldn't be painted over. So Trish, you look like you were going to say something. No? Okay. I, I think of the process for a lot of cities for those electrical boxes, they're wrapped. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, we looked we looked into yeah. just about every option on the face of the planet and for yeah. for whatever reason, I mean somebody I think it was Rod Merton spent maybe a couple of months on this and uh, basically we just figured out that it was there, there's something 
odd about the Tarpon Springs electrical boxes, and it just wasn't viable. Suppose there's Diane, no way. Do you remember? Do you remember exactly? We can't hear you, Diane. Some yeah. of them were city owned, and some of them were county. And then there was like you couldn't go over their the printed side. Mm -hmm. you wrap, and so I think it was just kind of abandoned because it was, you know, too difficult to, to get, I guess, the mm -hmm. image that they wanted to put on. But don't forget about the water tower. There's some cities that have some really cool art projects of their old water towers. Mm -hmm. That'd be really cool to, to do. So. Shall we take on the water tower? We've got a lot of stuff here, look, people. Well, the water towers are really traditional and they do them really well when they're done well. I mean, there's one in St. Pete that's uh, um, near uh, the old uh, Miller Huggins baseball park and uh, uh, it's, a, it's just a tank full of fish and stuff. So it's, it's mm -hmm. been re they've redone it a number of times. Yeah, well, this is, this is a huge structure on the, yeah. on the golf course. Yeah. Well, the bigger the <laughs> Lucianne? Go ahead. I was just going to say, I don't think it's a problem having a, a big list because each one of these has to be explored and there may be restraints, but I think mm -hmm. the, bigger, the bigger the list, the better chance we have of uh, some support by the BOC. Okay. That sounds good to me. Uh, Diane, what if I sit down and create a list and send it to you and you could distribute it to the committee? Sure. Okay, and then everybody could take a final look and see if I missed anything or if there anything that they've been able to rethink and would like to add or subtract. Um, let's see. Um, I was going back to the the uh, combined notes. Um, some of these things are very outdated. Uh, uh, the historic mural on the Macris building that, that of course has been done by Christopher Still. Um, I don't think we want to approach Walmart, Walgreens or Panera in this business climate. Um, how do people feel about that? I think a lot of these businesses are, are struggling. And then the um, encouraging young artists, we kind of went over that. Uh, okay, the gateway sign that's being done, I think completely by the BOC. Um, the historic photos of Tarpon Springs, I think, Diane, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's being done by economic development. Um, Maintenance funds, yes, we have a budget line for that in our, uh, in our plans. Uh, the Poseidon statue didn't happen. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, well, I think we're, we're kind of through our agenda. Um, Marissa, did we get any emails on any of these topics? No, we did not receive any emails on any of these topics. Uh, Mark, are there any uh, public comments on any of these items? If anyone would like to, to, to talk, please raise your hand. We have no raised hands at this time. Okay. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn unless anybody has any other comments, questions. I think we got a lot of work done today, folks. Mm -hmm. I make a motion that we adjourn. Okay, Trish, do I hear a second? Second. Second, second Dio. Okay, uh, we stand adjourned at 3.51 p.m. Our next regular meeting is uh, July 14th, Bastille Day. So come prepared with a croissant. <laughs> Okay, folks, thank you all very much. This was one of our marathoners, but I think it was very productive and we got a lot done.
Thank you, Joan, for all your research. Thank you. Onward and upward. <laughs>